Hello everybody, Christy Glass here with a finished object for you. Today's finished object is a puppy sweater. My puppy is now six months old, so she can finally wear this sweater that I actually started for her when she was much younger, but I could tell it was not going to fit for a while, and now it fits. So this sweater is the puppy bouquet sweater, and it's based off of this sweater. So this is my bouquet, which is by Junko Okamoto, and I will put a link to my finished object video on this sweater underneath this video. This gorgeous wool is from Manos del Uruguay. They donated it to me specifically for this sweater, and I am obsessed with it. I love the two colors together. I love that it's different from the front and the back. I love how it fits. And this yarn is so squishy and delicious and gorgeous and vibrant and everything that you really want in a knitting project. So I'm so, so, so pleased with how this came together, not only with the fiber, but of course of the pattern. I did run into a few troubles with this sweater, user troubles, user error, and I describe all of them in the video. So make sure you check that out if you are going to take on this sweater. Something I've learned since first publishing this video is that this is a sweater designed in one size only. And I heard from one of you that you can use Knit Companion to alter sweater patterns that may not fit you. So that is good news for those of you who feel you do not fit in this size. I also wanted to dive into using this pattern for other projects today because as you can see, there are so many different motifs to choose from on this sweater alone that you can use this pattern and get creative, which is what I did today with my puppy sweater. I have never used a pattern for a puppy sweater. What I've learned from observing my puppy, because I am not a dog mom, I had a dog growing up, but I wasn't involved in the ins and outs of her life and her care. So getting a puppy was all very new to me and I found that I had to sort of just watch her. So I watch her for her behaviors, for her actions. I was watching her body a lot and what I observed is that the front part of her body is smaller in size than the back. And so I used that little information that I have to inform this sweater. It was not the first puppy sweater that I attempted so I was really glad that I had taken some time to knit other puppy sweaters ahead of this one. My favorite motif on the sweater for the Junko Okamoto sweater is this one, which is on the chest, right in the front middle. And so this is on the front middle of Louise's sweater as well. Unfortunately, you don't see that as much. And I did think, oh, maybe I do want that on the back, but the back needed a wider motif so that it could cover the, the surface area of her body. Actually, the sizes are very, very similar. I do think that maybe I could use them interchangeably, but I did decide for this to be the front. And so as a result, I made it shorter in length. So maybe you can see this is kind of a high-low hem situation. This one is shorter with her belly and this one is longer with her back. This is how I went about creating this. I just knew I needed to make two large swatches for the motif. So I started off by doing just some ribbing alone. So you can, you can see I did the ribbing flat and I even did a few inches flat as well here on the back. And then I wanted to work in the round. So I joined in the round, but I, I had markers designating the front and the back so I knew which chart I was switching to. And I just chose charts that had a certain amount of stitches and also seemed like I liked them. And I knew I definitely wanted to do that front chart. And then I thought this little flower was nice. You can see this flower. Let's see, so here's the front chart right here. It's actually repeated three times, so it's in the center. And then it's splitting the back here. And then this other one, which I keep saying poppy in my mind, I have no idea if this actually looks like a poppy, is back here in the back. So here you can see it on the back of the sweater here, and it's match up in the puppy sweater here. 
I only had a little bit of purple left. I actually have a full purple skein, but I didn't want to break into it. So I decided to reverse Louise's sweater and it actually fulfilled something for me because I was thinking maybe I should have made it a pink sweater with purple motifs, but no regrets. I really love my purple sweater with pink motifs. So with this piece, you do top down and you work in the round on these charts, which meant that I had, I was going bottom up. So I had to pick out the two parts of the chart that I was going to do. And so I screenshotted them on my phone and then cropped it so I could only see that chart. And I put them in my images on my phone so I could just flip back and forth between them as I was going around and around and around. I also had to work the charts upside down because I was going bottom up. And because I was working flat on some parts, I had to do some purling. The best skill that I used of my handful of knitting skills was to read my knitting so that if I ever felt confused, I would always just be questioning, does this make sense where I am right now? Is this making sense? Because these floats always have to be on the front side. So if for some reason my yarn was in the back or the front and it shouldn't have been, then I could just move it to the front. So I hope that makes sense when I'm explaining that. Once I had knit to a certain point, I realized that I needed to split for the sleeves. So when I got to that point, it's about mm, like just over half of the motif is when I needed to split for these, not the sleeves, for the paw holes, for the armholes. So once I got to that halfway point, I was knitting flat. So I knit back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And once I was finished with the motif, because the motif, although it does come in, it does take up a certain amount of stitches, you can crop off some on the side if you need to, but I just made sure that my stitch count worked with the chart. When I got to this point, I started decreasing on the sides to just make it a little bit more like shapely. I wanted it to have a bit of a sweater shape. so. I just did some simple decreases as I finished off the inch or so here above the motif. And since this was the back, I didn't need to decrease that much. Here in the front, maybe you can see it kind of curves in a bit more here on the sides. I did feel as if I needed to decrease more to bring it from her barrel chest to more of her neck area. She's a dog, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. I did do a few fittings on her as I was finishing this up. I, I had abandoned the project because it just wasn't fitting her, it was too big. And I was able to finish these inches, just finishing off the motifs in a single sitting. And once I got to this point, I could try it on her. And I, at first I thought this hole from here to here was going to be the collar, but it was way too big. So it was nice because I tried it on her and realized, okay, I'm just going to bring so I had, I had already done the ribbing around, so I just brought the ribbing in together and sewed up a bit of a kind of a shoulder seam here. So the ribbing does extend out to the shoulder seam, which is very silly and we would never want that in one of our sweaters. But at the same time, it kind of gives it this little like ribbed boat neck detail that we can pretend I designed for real. The nice thing too about this is maybe if she does grow out of it, like gets too big, there's still a chance she could maybe fit into it if I do rip out this seaming and make this the collar again or the opening again for her face. I don't know. I think she does have a few more pounds to gain. She does seem to really like this sweater. She has worn it a lot and she doesn't fuss with it. Sometimes she gets a little fussy with the sweater, but she seems to really enjoy this one. I think she knows it's a very stellar sweater and I just love it on her. I think she looks so perfect in it. And of course, I love twinning. Can you believe I'm not a dog person? I'm actually not. So thank you so much as always for joining me here on Christy Glass Knits and I will see you next time. Bye.